Pseudoscience is a fairly broad category. There's lots of different types. This episode explores just 10 of some of the ones that I hate the most. See if yours made the list on this week's episode of Think Stuckically. So if you don't know what therapeutic touch is, I'll give it to you briefly. It is a type of energy healing whereby the practitioner moves his or her hands over the patient in order to redirect their chi or prana energy in order to create healing. As you might have guessed, there's no evidence for this whatsoever, um, except that there is a really cool study that goes along with this. A girl named Emily Rosak became the youngest person to publish in a major medical journal at the age of nine when she published her findings when she tested therapeutic touch practitioners. The results of the study showed that not only did the therapeutic touch practitioners fail, the practitioners actually did worse than chance. They were less effective than 5% in being able to detect someone's energy field. I'm only going to touch on a couple, mainly because I think they're probably two of the most ridiculous. Uh, the first one is the moon hoax conspiracy, the idea that we fake going to the moon on a movie set. Um, now, several things have taken this on. Uh, the Mythbusters probably most notably did an episode on some of the photographs that were taken that are alleged to have been faked. The fact that uh, we went to the moon is pretty definitive. It's pretty hard to get laser reflectors on the moon that scientists currently use to measure the recession of the moon without having gone there. Just saying. The other conspiracy theory that I think is probably the most prevalent is the chemtrails. There's no such thing as chemtrails. What conspiracy theorists call chemtrails are actually contrails. Contrails form when hot humid air from jet exhaust mixes with environmental air at low vapor pressure and at low temperature. The mixing is a result of turbulence generated by engine exhaust. Cloud formation by, by a mixing process is similar to the cloud formation you see when you exhale and you see your breath. Conspiracy theorists will claim that these contrails are actually the government spraying chemicals on us to keep us under control via some kind of mind control or whatever. Um, it's not true. We're, the contrails are a fairly well-known, understood phenomenon, as I just described. Scientists know what they are, and it's not the government out to get you. Sorry. So the word psychic is kind of a catch-all. It refers to any kind of fortune teller or medium, someone that can see into the future, speak to the dead, any kinds of those people. Um, this kind of stuff's dangerous because it stops people from being able to seek actual solutions to problems. Mediums also very often prey on vulnerable, grieving people, uh, those who have lost a loved one, and they will claim that they can talk to them in the spirit world and be able to answer questions and so forth on this dead person's behalf. Whatever the reason these people are doing this, it's sick and they need to stop. To date, there has been no scientific evidence to support the notion that anyone has any clairvoyant abilities of any kind, be it seeing into the future or speaking to the dead. The James Ramsey Educational Foundation, in fact, has a prize worth a million dollars to anyone who can do so, and I'm going to link that in the description bar below so you can check it out. And if you have any clairvoyant abilities, sign up and collect your million dollar prize. Quantum mysticism in general is any kind of pseudoscience that tries to use quantum mechanics to explain their theories that involve some kind of misuse of the word energy, be it healing energy, mystical energy, crystal energy, uh, consciousness, any of that kind of thing. And it's really a misunderstanding of physics. Physicists themselves have a hard time grappling with some of the things in quantum mechanics. What's great about quantum mechanics is that it's very well tested and at least understood to work. Uh, whether we understand how it works is a different conversation. But you shouldn't be taking any advice from someone who claims to truly understand quantum mechanics who isn't a physicist. 
it's a big red flag for anyone to say that quantum mechanics is at the heart of their theory. The only theory that quantum mechanics is at the heart of is physics. There is no healing properties of quantum mechanics. We can't show any other effect of quantum mechanics, such as bringing about consciousness or what have you. So this one's bunk and needs to go. Naturopathy is a system of healing that uses entirely natural ingredients, everything from sunlight to water, air, plants, etc., uh, to bring about healing of certain diseases and ailments. Some have gone so far as to prescribe something called colonic hydrotherapy or colon hydrotherapy for things like arthritis. I mean, arthritis in your butt. Think about that for a second. Naturopathy is based on the belief that the body is going to heal itself spontaneously. Now, while the body does have an immune system, science has proven that, good job science, the danger here is avoiding efficable treatments from doctors in favor of something that has no efficacy whatsoever. It's dangerous to avoid or delay getting treatment for many things. If naturopathy is going to stop you, or prevent you, or delay you from getting treatment, it's dangerous. Many, many people spend thousands of dollars and waste time, and sometimes costs their lives, to this ridiculous treatment option. This isn't to say we haven't derived medicine from nature before. It's clearly not true. Um, the easiest one is aspirin, which is derived from willow bark, or even penicillin, which is an antibiotic that is commonly used to treat all sorts of things. What needs to be understood is you have to make sure that the substance you're using actually treats the disease you're trying to treat. Yes, creationism is a pseudoscience, even though its roots are buried deep inside religion. Creationism is, of course, the idea that the earth was created not too long ago, not more than six to 10,000 years, by some creator who set everything into motion and put everything in its place and had all the animals and all the people right where they are in their current form. This is, of course, wrong, uh, as evidenced by all the evidence for evolution, geology, biology, chemistry, etc. Almost every field of science contradicts creationism to its very core. Why is this important? Why is it dangerous that people believe something that seems pretty benign? It leads people to not understand science in general. It makes them believe that climate change isn't real, which is a very real threat to the planet. Most importantly, it's because the people who believe it want it to be taught in schools. And the National Center for Science Education has been doing a great job fighting this insidious nonsense from being taught in our schools. They want it taught in place of evolution or alongside it as some kind of legitimate theory, except that it has no evidence for it. The only reason they want creationism taught is to put their ideas on par with the mountain of evidence that is evolution and the other fields of science. Let's intelligently design our education system so that we can kick creationism out. Acupuncture is, for whatever reason, a fairly contentious and controversial topic. Um, there are some people that claim it works, and I have to ask those people, how does it work? The traditional answer that's given by most believers and practitioners is that acupuncture is a system of healing developed by the Chinese, which is very ancient, and therefore must work, that is supposed to redirect the flow of qi, or life energy, by sticking needles around the body in particular points. The main problem with acupuncture is that its underlying tenet, that thing about qi energy, has never been shown to be true. We can't measure chi energy anywhere. So if we can't measure chi, if we can't even establish its basic existence, how are needles supposed to even direct it? Like naturopathy, it's going to prevent you or delay you from getting proper medical treatment. Two, there can be serious side effects and serious complications that develop because of acupuncture. 
If you want to learn more about the harm of acupuncture or any other of the pseudosciences I've mentioned, you can go to whatstheharm.net. Homeopathy is the notion that you can cure all manner of ailments by diluting a substance that causes that ailment in solution until there is almost no trace of the curing agent in the solution. It's based on two basic principles. One, that like cures like. Something that causes the disease should be able to cure it. The other is this, quote, law of minimum dose, that the lower the concentration of some substance, the stronger it is. The problem with this is, um, if you take a look at the world's oceans and the world's water supplies, the world's water supplies have had all sorts of things in it, ranging from dead dinosaurs to dinosaur poop to modern animal poop, all sorts of things. So if homeopathy is true, then we should be drinking the most potent shit water on the face of the planet. Facilitated communication is a serious problem because the practitioners of this pseudoscience prey on the most vulnerable and desperate among us. The parents of and those suffering from things like autism and cerebral palsy, mental retardation, and other forms of brain damage that don't allow the person to communicate at all or properly. Practitioners of facilitated communication place their hand on the patient's hand, wrist, or arm, and with the other will help direct the patient's hand onto a board with letters or numbers or a keyboard, etc., in order to either spell out words or point to pictures to express a thought. There's absolutely no scientific evidence to back up that these people have any ability to help facilitate the communication of these people. The conditions I mentioned are extremely serious. Trying to communicate with someone who is autistic or who has mental retardation or other conditions that don't allow them to communicate can be frustrating. It's things like facilitated communication that really anger me because these people are taking advantage of what may be the most desperate people and the most vulnerable people. It's immoral. And when people ask me, what's the harm of people believing certain things? It's things like this that I point to. This nonsense has to go. It's immoral, and there is no evidence to support it. Some of you might be surprised to see chiropractic on this list. The classical claims of chiropractic medicine rely on the notion of subluxations or misalignments of the spine. Now, while that isn't to say that there are certain spinal injuries that are a cause of the misplacement of certain things, like I myself have a slip disc in my lower back. A subluxation is a misalignment of bone that press on nerves that cause all sorts of medical problems. As with the rest of these pseudosciences, there's no evidence to support the notion. Chiropractors spend a lot of time and energy cloaking their pseudoscience in scientific sounding language and medical sounding language. Here are some facts about chiropractors you should know. Chiropractors don't go to a traditional medical school. They go to a two-year trade school to learn this pseudoscience. They're not accredited, they're not licensed by anybody, and the name Doctor of Chiropractic is extremely misleading because they're not doctors of anything. They aren't PhDs, they aren't MDs, they're not required to receive any formal medical training whatsoever. Neck manipulations are some of the most dangerous things you can do. Neck manipulations from chiropractors are known to cause strokes and have caused strokes in hundreds of people. These chiropractors also will manipulate baby spines. Why is that stupid? Well, have you seen a baby's spine lately? A baby's spine isn't fully developed, which means that it has a lot more cartilage than ours has. Its bones haven't fully developed. So for a chiropractor to claim that a baby's bones are misaligned is just stupid. Adjusting a baby's spine to cure it of anything is dangerous for that child. And it's child endangerment to take them to a chiropractor. So I urge you, if you or anyone you know is taking a baby to the chiropractor, you need to stop. Chiropractors are number one on this list because they're seen as a legitimate form of treatment and health care. Among everything else on this list, 
they are probably the most respected, and for absolutely no reason. Chiropractors do not publish in major medical journals. Where is the evidence to support their claims? Chiropractic treatments don't stand up to scientific rigor, and as such, they should be discarded and ignored as a method of treatment. They prey on gullible people and will tell you that there's all sorts of misalignments, etc., in these images when there really isn't. See a real doctor. Ignore the chiropractor. Don't waste your money and put yourself at risk. Thanks, everyone, for watching this video. It was really fun to make. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If there are any pseudosciences you want me to cover in the future, please put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye!